Hey there, welcome to Extra Healthish. This is the Big Sister Podcast to Healthish. This podcast from Body and Soul gives you that little bit extra in your day for your mind, body and soul. I am your host, Felicity Harley. You might know of Isabel Cornish. She Well, she's better known as the actress, appearing in things like Puberty Blues. Well, she's also a yoga teacher, personal trainer and health coach. And she stuffed all of her life learnings into a new book called The Why. So what is her why? And what does her version of living an epic life look like? Well, she's going to share all that with us today, including how she's learnt to manage her ADHD. Now, she joined me by Zoom on a farm from out the back of Byron Bay. Isabel, thank you so much for coming on Extra Healthy-ish. And I should say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Now, tell me, I start, actually ask this question for everyone who comes on this podcast. How do you stay extra healthy-ish in your life? Or perhaps how are you planning on staying extra healthy-ish in 2022? For me this year, it's just about slowing down and remaining present. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm a goal setter. I like to keep goals. But the older I get, the more I'm realising that I've got to slow down and and really like take my time with those goals and working on integration this year. Oh, integration. Good word. Now, one goal you've obviously set and hit is writing a book. So well done on that one. And it's about finding your why. Let's start with what is your why and how, talk us through how you worked that out for yourself. Yeah. So, you know, I have a different why for many parts of my lifestyle. So the reason the book's called the why is because this book is my why. It's why I do the things I do. It's why I am the way that I am. And also my why is what drives my healthy habits, you know. So if we integrate the why into our life, we're integrating meaning and purpose. So we then aren't just doing things because we think we need to do them. We have, you know, a purpose and a meaning driving those decisions that we make each day and those habits that we do. So this book is my why. It's my my mission and my drive is why I prioritize my health. It's why I constantly work to grow and become a better version of myself. It's why I, you know, write things like this book and why I do the work that I do to hopefully inspire other people to, you know, be in the driver's seat for their life and what they desire. How did you work out that this is what you you know, how did you get to the point where you thought, okay, this is what I actually want to do before you wrote the book or so where did you get to your why or your purpose? So for me it was, you know, I age and I struggled with an eating disorder and I just felt like there was just so much out there in the health and wellness industry that was so overwhelming and then I spent like a decade 10 years developing like like learning and studying so eating psychology, yoga, personal training and then also my own life experience of trial and error, trial and error. Um, and then I kind of realised that, you know, this is the book for me, this book was the book that I wished that I had. Like yeah, because I read so many diet books and so many like do this workout, do this workout. And it took me so long to figure out that like it's all about individuality and it's all about like finding uh, healthy habits that can nourish you on your journey it's not about doing what someone else does or what someone what someone else thinks you should do so this is the book that I kind of wished that I had throughout my journey to help me just like get back to like my soul and you know that inner essence inside myself which took me a long time to find and that's why this book is all about you know it's it like I share so many different practices and healthy habits but it's all about creating a lifestyle that is unique to the individual. Um, yeah, ex- exactly. And I think you made a good point there because it's about, you know, you can listen to other people's ideas on what their healthy habits, but it's about choosing what works for you. Definitely. Yeah. And it's like, sometimes it's not about like uh, in the book, I talk about the phrase, it's not about um, doing rather than undoing. So sometimes we think we've got to do this, 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 but then we've just got to take a step back and undo all those conditionings in our mind that make us think we need to do that or that or that or that and just getting back to ourselves. Like what do I want? What makes me feel best? 
Just quickly, for those people who didn't listen to you on Healthy-ish, what are some of your healthy habits that you're doing right now? So at the moment, I'm very, um, I'm prioritizing my dance practice. So, which is especially important to me in this um, time of the year that we're in right now, because we can get so fixated on like, oh, new year, like I've got to do this, I've got to do this. And like, this is the year. And it's a very, it's a very mind driven energy. So dance is really helping me at the moment. Um, putting on music, dancing gets me back into my body. It helps me to get out of those thoughts of the mind. And it helps me to also integrate things that I want to cultivate more of to integrate that essence of feeling in my body. And then at the moment, meditation has been important for me because, you know, we always start the year and there's like so much going on. I feel like January is more hectic than December, honestly. <laughs> it can be. And sometimes we put pressure on ourselves. You're like, you're absolutely right. We think, oh, I, I should be doing this and starting this and doing this. And, and then you're like, well, hang on. No, it's supposed to be the time of year that you renew, you really renew. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So meditation is very important important for that this time of year uh just helps you know to just like like let some of those things go and to just focus a little bit more on being rather than doing um yeah being and then spending time in nature is always a massive one for me so like walking my dog or going on a hike or walking on trails um just it really rejuvenates me it makes me feel calm and I move my body body at the same time so they're the three big ones for me at the moment we'll be back after this short break with more from isabel tell us a bit more about this whole idea you write about about thinking big and small and how it works in your life yes yeah, so i was inspired to create this thinking big and thinking small um at one part in my life when i'd fallen off track i'd realized you know i was taking directions without uh, destination. So it's like driving a car and, you know, someone's like right and left, but you haven't defined a destination. So that's why I was like, yeah, I like that analogy point in my life. I was like, I need to think big, like, you no, know, what, what do I actually want? Like, what are my goals and what kind of person do I want to work towards being? And then I realized it's all about thinking small because it's like, you know, you can't always think big because then you're striving for something that's in the future. So then you have to think small and those small things are what are the actions, decisions and habits that I can implement today that are going to help me get to that larger goal. So it keeps you present because if you're always thinking about the big goal, then you're living in your mind, you're living in something like in the future. So the thinking small is like what habits, ways of being, ways of thinking can I prioritize today that are going to eventually get me to my big goal yeah well it, it, that was really well explained thank you what it, tell us what is one of your big goals that you're aiming for and how are you getting there in those small ways yeah so for me like um the book was one of my big goals and then now that's done I'm reassessing my goals at the moment but if for example one of my goals this year is to get good at the electric guitar so Oh, I like it. I've started teaching my guitar, myself guitar about a year ago and I absolutely love it. So then I go, okay, so I want to be able to play this advanced song on the electric guitar. So then my thinking small is, okay, well, I need to practice for 20 minutes each day. Yep, so that's, easy. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's a, an easy way to explain it. Good luck with that one, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I just... Music is just so much fun. I, I used to play a lot of music when I was younger and then getting back in, into music in this last year has just been so much fun. Oh, it's good to hear. Now, you talk a lot about journaling and mapping and how does this help you keep, well, your mindset in check? Yeah, so journaling is very important um, for my lifestyle. It just helps me, to, you know, reevaluate and reset goals because we're always changing and evolving and growing. So journaling is a practice that helps me to go, okay, well, what else do I want to cultivate more of now? And it helps me to also, you know, release feelings and things that I don't need to hold on to anymore. So I'll journal in all different ways. Sometimes I go through periods where I'm just using creativity for my journaling, which is like poetry and drawing. And then sometimes it's more, yeah, mapping, mapping and goal setting. So it's like, you know, where you draw the circle and then you have all your little lines out to the sides. And I like to use journaling ways like that to help me get clarity on things. And is journaling helped you with your ADHD, 
D. I mean, you talk about the fact that you have managed it yourself and you've, you know, you've got a lovely opener in the book where you say, you know, this is who I am. How have you learned to embrace who you are? Yeah, so for me, healthy habits are extremely important. They keep me grounded and centred. And I've learned to embrace who I am really through the ups and downs and by realising that, like, everyone is unique and individual and we're the only person that we're the only us. And you can't try and be like someone else or you can, but you'll notice after a period of time that you're further even further away from yourself then. So for me, it was just understanding that like I am a unique person and then building that like love and care for myself and compassion for myself and highlighting my strengths over my weaknesses and qualities that, you know, I like about myself rather than qualities that are a little bit lacking. And it's like just becoming a friend to ourselves is just a simple way to put it. So, you know, I wasn't always that like when I struggled with body image and eating disorder, you know, I didn't have those tools and those tricks, but along my healing journey, then I realized the importance of that. Yeah, well said. Now, often when you write a book and then you look back on it, you realize things about yourself that you probably knew but hadn't really confirmed. What did you or did you learn anything about yourself after writing this or do you look back and think, oh, wow, that is so true or something that resonates in your book? Yeah, for sure. And I look back now and go, whoa, I've grown so much since this book. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like because you're always changing, you're always evolving and this book was like, it was one of those things where it was like, I feel like it hit me almost, you know, like Elizabeth Gilbert talks about it. Like if you don't take action on creativity, it'll float off and hit someone else. So this yes. book for me was like, I had to write it. There wasn't even a question about it. Like one day I was in LA, went to write a blog post and I just got hit and I was like, I have to write this book. And it was this exact book that I have now in front of me that's been just about to hit the shelves so for two years, I just had like, I have to write this book. So this book for me, um, you know, this, I feel like I've grown so much since, since this book as well, but it's like, it's exactly what I wanted it to be, which is I'm super stoked about. And now I just, I'm so interested to see how it resonates with other people because I didn't write this book for me. I wrote this book for all of these beautiful people that are going to read it and pick it up and you know, that's where it sits with me at the moment. I'm just excited to see, like, I'm excited to see what people think of it and if it makes an impact in their lives. Well, you've done a great job, Isabel, and lovely to chat to you on Extra Healthish. And thanks for coming on and sharing your, well, your learnings and your insights. Thank you. Thanks for having me. If you want to work out your why, if you want more info, make sure you grab Isabel's book. It is called The Why, Healthy Habits for an Epic Life. If you want more from us, remember Extra Healthy-ish, we publish a new episode for your wonderfully healthy ears every morning Monday to Thursday. For more, head to bodyandsoul.com.au or join the conversation via Body and Soul on Instagram or Facebook. Thanks again for tuning in. And if you have a moment, we'd be so grateful if you could rate, review and subscribe to this podcast. And until tomorrow... Stay extra healthy-ish.